a few weeks ago I came to the attention of this article it's uh, on uh, Team Nation and it's from uh, Ellington Darden it's called Growth Explosion the 30-10-13 technique uh, once a week workout plan for fast gains okay so the article starts with uh, explaining about the, the kit that he trained he trained them for I thought something like uh, six weeks six weeks and how much muscle they gained be skeptical about it when you read it maybe it's true maybe it's not it's for, for a kid who starts training uh, it's 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 not really strange when you gain the first years uh, first year about uh, 20 22 pounds of muscle but he that, that, that's not an average but it's a little bit above average but this specific kid it's named uh, his name is Jordan he gains he trained six times in six weeks and built 21.25 pounds of muscle so I say that's maybe he's a little bit above average if I see the photos then to be honest I don't see so much this 20 pounds coming back I see also that he gained a little bit of fat on his uh, on his total body especially the midsection you see a little bit so I don't know if he really counted the muscle or just the weight so okay but let's go further the more uh, interesting thing for me instead of reading what uh, kids gained and uh, well you don't actually know if it's if it's 100% correct or is it just to sell this or just to sell this this program for me it just sounds uh, interesting this 30 10 30 just to train a little bit different than what you actually used to so then he starts to explain a little bit why he came to the uh, to the negative that how important they are and of course we all know that uh, the negative is a very important part that's why many of us and many others uh, do the negative a little bit slower because you cause a little bit more damage and hope to trigger a little bit more growth because of this here he writes I'm going to uh, say what he writes but please read the whole article because I just take a small portion of it so here says that uh, that he firmly believes that the right type of negative training makes a deeper inroad into a person's starting level of strength we all know that it's that's true of course uh, such a deeper inroad then stimulates growth hormone which is important aspect for muscular size increases so then he explains that he was working on it for more than five years just to find out experimenting on people and here later he's going to explain to you what the 30 10 30 technique is all about I'm going to read it and I'm going to tell you what I think of it and how I would or maybe do it a little bit different or uh, explain to you why it is like this so and of course my my experience with this technique and how I felt it so he goes to 30 10 30 technique so his new technique is named 30 10 30 so i hear you say what is that all about okay so that stands for 30 second slow negative repetition followed immediately by a 10 faster positive and negative reps so one second up and two seconds down with controlled turnarounds followed by a finishing 30 second negative rep the entire set takes approximately 90 seconds and 70 seconds of it involves what I call negative uncontractions uncontractions interesting word this one second up 
and two seconds down is pretty fast. Uh, the problem with this can be that you're in actually in a hurry <laughs> to get the next rep up and the danger with this is that you're going to bounce at the bottom just to get the weight up and we all know that if you're bouncing the weights it's the risk of an injury is, is very high so for some exercises is one second up two seconds down is uh, is is okay uh, exercises for the for the biceps I believe chest also back I don't have so much problem with shoulders not but for legs for the legs I feel it's a little bit too fast I still do it one second up two seconds down with legs but maybe in the future maybe in a few weeks time I'm going to change it to maybe one or two seconds up and two or three seconds down maybe the one second up is already enough and the two seconds down will be not enough so I want to put a three seconds down just to use the, the slower negative to uh, a nicer turnaround before you do the positive part again so we go to the next time uh, so it goes further this is important the name 301030 30 involves more than those meaningful numbers in practice the 30 second negatives can vary from 15 to 30 seconds Frequently, a trainee can manage the first negative repetition in 30 seconds, but can barely get 15 seconds on the finishing negative. Thus, on his workout sheet, his notation would read 30, 10, 15. And that's very logic. I mean, the first negative, if you can't even make 30, then that means that you fail on a negative so you cannot do the 10 positives anymore so it's impo impossible to do the next 10 repetitions you can't even make one repetition if you fail on the first 30 seconds sounds logic but maybe not for everybody because here he goes or sometimes both the first and negative might be a little too fast so the notation might read 25 10 25 if your counting is so bad and you cannot look at the clock and you get the first 25 seconds and it should be 30 of course then I don't know what you're doing there first 30 seconds is just first 30 seconds so you never get 25 10 25 you can get 30 10 25 but 30 10 25 uh, no so then it goes further then in actual high intensity training the faster middle reps are not always 10 sometimes you can do only 7 8 or 9 so your record might read 30 8 30 or on an energetic training day you might do 10 easily and get another two reps so you tried 30 12 30 it's all very logic and the point is the point is when you can't reach so you do your 30 first negative seconds then you're going to do your repetitions when you fail on the eighth repetition or even on the seven you cannot get the weight up to do the negative if that would be the case then it would mean that you could do another repetition so when you want to do this and you fail on the eighth repetition you have to rest at least five seconds so you take actually a rest pause to lift the weight up again and then start with your uh, last 30 seconds 
So the idea is always to work to momentary muscular fatigue on the in-between positive negative repetition and the finishing negative and that's of course very logic and what it actually means is that when you do the repetitions you should not be able to make another repetition before you start the last 30 seconds so if you are uh, you became so incredibly strong from one week to another and you overshoot your repetitions you use the same weight as last time because you could do only eight and now suddenly you can do 12 do 12 go to the end go can do 13 do 13 if you can do 14 do 14 and then finish with the last 30 seconds if you can so when you can complete any exercise in 30 12 30 so you can do 12 repetitions that's the signal to increase the resistance by three to five percent for your subsequent workout um, yeah this sounds logic so you can do a certain amount of repetitions and for me I do this did this few times for me the the tenth the repetition is just the the, the maximum so what I mean is if I can do 10, I go up with this 3 to 5%. I like 3 a little bit more than 5, but with some exercises it's, it's almost impossible to just add 3%, so it's going to be 5. So then he goes to the recommended 8 exercises. I'm going to name you all the exercises first and then um, what problem I found and what you can occur when you do this workout so below is the 30 10 30 routine and the orders of the exercises you'll do all eight exercises in one in every workout one set for every movement and each once a week workout should take about half hour and if you have good cardio you can do this in a half hour or even less so we start with the leg curl machine. Second exercise is the barbell squat. Third exercise is the calf raise on the machine. Fourth is the pull down on the lap machine. Fifth, barbell bench press. Sixth, barbell curl. Seventh, barbell overhead press. Eighth, barbell reverse curl. If you see already, it's a lot of barbell work. If you train alone, I would not suggest you to do any barbell work. Okay, we start with the leg curl machine. I think that's a very good choice. You can do it either lying or seated. It's both, both correct, both nice. And then we go to the second exercise, the barbell squat. I would not choose a barbell squat and the reason why is that you train to uh, failure and when you reach failure on a barbell squat you're not standing you're seated so what you get then is that with the weight that you handle and you're going to go for after the repetitions and you go for the last 30 seconds how you get this weight up you have to wait so long before you have strength again and push the weight up and don't forget you're really in a, in a deep squat so it's it can be very harmful to try to lift the weight up from that position so you have to rest at least 10 seconds before you can do that so I would suggest to do a leg press or maybe a dumbbell squat or maybe a squat machine but barbell squat I would not suggest you can try it and if you like it great if you if you find that it's absolutely no problem for you maybe post it uh, under this video your experience with it then we come to the third exercise and it's calf raise on the machine calf raise on a machine is very good but again if you did just a barbell squat 
and your legs are like pudding and you do a calf raise on a machine then do it on a seated machine and not on a standing machine if you do it on a standing machine when your legs are like pudding you're going to have problem standing and also then again a problem with training the calves till real failure so if you do the calf raise do it on the seating seated machine or what I'm doing actually I do it as the second exercise so I do first leg curl then the calf raise and then the squat or the leg press in my case so then we go to the fourth exercise and that's a pull down on a lat machine you can do either a pull down or a row uh, I like to do the row and because the, the muscles on my back I feel that the, the the thickness is just a little bit lacking because when I did my back exercises I always start with a pull down and then go to a row so now I just want to try and find out that if I do only the row how my back is developing on this fifth exercise it's barbell bench press again the barbell bench press how are you going to do the barbell bench press when you're all alone you can do this maybe in a smith rack that that can be uh, that's a possibility or you have a training partner and that can help you when you fail after the uh, repetitions but then again i would suggest a machine it's much safer especially when you go uh, all the way to failure then comes the sixth exercise and that's a barbell curl a barbell curl I did it I did this workout now three times and in uh, the, the, the workout what I'm going to show you what uh, what I taped is at the gym where I was a guest and they don't have uh, a machine curl so I tried the barbell curl and no 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 tell you why because your back is pudding your back is pudding your legs are pudding you miss the stability so if you're standing I felt it more that I was just failing on um, overall uh, exhaustion instead of really failing because my biceps couldn't hold it anymore when you're just standing there and you have this barbell in your hands you just feel your whole back is finished your legs are finished so it's difficult to just stand there and curling and no it's not for me maybe you like it but I'm not going to do it anymore for me it's better to do it with uh, seated seated dumbbell curl uh, machine curl whatever but standing I don't think it's a good idea then we go to the seventh exercise and that's barbell overhead press and then again here's with the problem with the barbell overhead press especially in this program your back is pudding your back is weak so it's for me pretty dangerous to go there and press a barbell over my head you have to have very good stability on the back and then you go the barbell overhead press okay behind the neck so it's very much stress on the shoulders what you actually don't want so are you going to press in front of you so then again I would not even suggest dumbbells but I would really suggest or a lateral raise what trains the side of the the, the deltoid because with the, with the barbell press or the machine press or the dumbbell press or whatever you want whatever exercise you do for chest you already train your the front shoulders so I would suggest either the lateral raise or a machine overhead press where you have good stability of your back and then you get a barbell reverse curl well this is uh, optional I mean I never ever trained my forearms they're just naturally too big 
especially compared with my upper arm so I'm not going to do it so for my last exercise I'm doing a tricep extension because I don't do the barbell overhead press which trains your triceps and together with the uh, bench press so I train an exercise, extra exercise for my triceps instead of this so and here's also an interesting point that he makes how to choose uh, the weight, the resistance uh, so he goes like uh, to perform to perform each exercise choose a resistance that's approximately 80% of what you usually handle for 10 reps in good form also you will need a watch with a second hand or a big clock with a second hand in plain sight or have a spotter help you with initial lifting and counting rest approximately 60 seconds between exercises okay so this 80% of what you usually handle for 10 repetitions is when you in fact train with a already faster cadence I'm used to training a slow cadence 4 seconds up 6 seconds down which is a uh, very very safe to do but if you do a faster cadence what you already uh, many people do then this 80% is correct when you do already a slower cadence and with a slower cadence you do already uh, 90 seconds time under tension then you just keep the same weight or maybe in you can even put a little bit more weight in it so you can use slightly more weight not very much but slightly maybe three percent or something uh, then this timing this timing is very important you because you want to clock exactly this first 30 seconds and you want if you want to really uh, keep good track of your progress you want to have every repetition the same cadence Every, set, every repetition should be one up, two down, one up, two down, one up, two down, it, it up, tom tom. So this cadence. So what I did is it was I made an MP3 with me counting from 30 seconds and down, and then the 10 repetitions, one up, two down, one up, two down, one up, two down until 10. So this is what I made and then again finishing with the 30 seconds so I just listen to me listen to me counting and I know about where I am especially with the uh, with, the, with the 10 repetitions how far I am and how many repetitions I actually did so it's more easy for me to document it if you do not have this mp3 of course you don't have it because I'm the only one who has it then you want to have in fact two timers one timer for the 30 seconds and another timer for this 10 repetitions and just to look at as soon as you finish with this 10 repetitions or 8 or 12 or 15 or 6 or whatever you have then put the first timer again on 30 seconds for the last uh, negative so then he goes with the program notes and tips and these tips are very important especially when you're not used to training with high intensity training you still think more is better so he starts with first for the best results don't assume that more is better and what in the high intensity community we already know of course Performing the described routine two or three times per week is not better than one time per week and you're going to find out when you do it. It all depends of course how fast you are recovering, your age, your kind of work, your food, your rest, all these things are very important and of course your genes. 
so it's very personal but once a week is quite sufficient maybe in the beginning you could do it if if you really want to go more but rest at least five days you can't do this two or three times a week it's not if you can do this two to three times per week and after a few weeks of doing this you still get stronger on every workout on every exercise and please post it down below because I want to know you <laughs> I mean it's 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 almost impossible then you but uh, once a week I think is uh, sufficient it's 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 brutal if you can do this workout uh, under a half hour then you know what I'm talking about it's very taxing on your body so then all of his teenage trainees were students students who were in school and on the move with extracurricular activities almost every day so they were pretty busy but busy and not a very uh, heavy physical activities what some of us have so he goes please note a lack of vigorous activities on your non-training days especially during the first two weeks is an important aspect of explosive growth so the best is just to do absolutely nothing and just only eat and sleep that's actually what he's saying it's, uh, it's not doable for many of us so you won't get this explosive growth <laughs> okay then the second once a week training forces you to focus sharply to each phase of each repetition while calculated precision and push your body carefully to all out intensity your undivided attention is necessary during each 90 second period episode and this is very important very important indeed when you are tired and you're going to do a workout like this or any HIT workout and you expect results and you're not focused you're not going to have it because you have to be laser focused on every set that you do and every exercise that you do and every workout that you do every time you have to be sharp you have to be focused you have to be determined to go all out if you have other things on your mind then you then it's almost impossible to go that far I think that's also a point that I make before and that's that most people who fail on high intensity training is because they are mentally weak they just cannot go all out because they are mentally weak they're mentally incapable of going so far because the brain after a while after two-thirds of the workout of the exercise is going to say stop don't go further and I've noticed this many times with different people they can't go that far they give up before the end is there because it's just too hard so in my opinion that's why many people fail that's why it's important to rest to rest very carefully that when you go to the gym that's all what you're going to do the moment that you step into the gym the moment that you start your exercise you have to understand there's no point of return you can't stop you can't say okay now listen let's stop with this person or just check my tell no you have to go for it as, as soon the moment that I start my exercise I know from that moment it's it in 20 minutes in half hour I'm done and I only get one chance one opportunity to do this one time per week so I'm going to put every effort in there all my focus all my strength and all my energy is going in that one workout so on the third it's food 
Food is secondary to training, but is still very important. Uh, yes and no. It's secondary to training because if you did not do the workout, then the food is just the food. It's just to keep you healthy, to keep you uh, energized and to make you even maybe fat. So without the trigger of the training, food is just survival. So, but it's still important. Each young man was instructed to apply a formula of taking his current body weight in pounds and multiplying the number by 20 calories. All three of the guys pictured weighed approximately 180 pounds at the start, so they consumed from 3600 to 4000 calories each day for the first six weeks. So that also explains why they looked to me that he became a little bit more fat. Uh, then he goes, the meals were at least 50% carbohydrates. Okay. Protein shakes were encouraged and as was creatine monohydrate. And then he goes a little bit to the uh, commercial side. Blah, 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 make a little bit of... Uh, uh, maybe a little bit of money about this. Plus each guy drank one gallon of cold water each day. Okay, so food is a different aspect. I don't believe that you need so much carbohydrates, 50%. Maybe you can even argue that you don't need any carbohydrates, but yeah, the opinions are a little bit different. I feel better with uh, a little bit of carbohydrates, especially after the workouts first few days but I don't go higher than uh, 20 or 30 percent protein shakes are nice were encouraged but yeah that's because he goes 50 percent carbohydrates that means that uh, the the protein is not so high as soon as you go higher in your proteins and a little bit lower in your carbohydrates you don't need any protein shakes because you get enough protein in there and the same with uh, creatine monohydrate, what he says, if you eat enough muscle meat, your muscles are full with creatine. So you don't need this supplement. So then comes number four. Uh, teenagers frequently have too much stress in their lives. Yeah, now they make it more stressful than is actually necessary, but okay. Uh, distressing, uh, unless they go to college and they're studying so that's enough stress of course de-stressing was encouraged in the form of stretching and self-massage with balls and foam rollers okay don't even go to this because self-massage darden i don't know what you're talking about with self-massage but uh yeah, a teenager with self-massaging, you can think of this like, uh, especially with balls and foam rollers. Oh, rollers, okay, with balls. Okay, okay so go to the next step. It's the last one. Fifth, extra rest and sleep is a must. And that's very important. You sleep and you rest. Teenagers and their growing muscles need from nine and a half to ten hours of sleep each night. That's pretty high. It's all about your quality of sleep. The higher the quality of sleep, the less you need. But as a teenager, you sleep a lot, yeah. Also, a 20 minute nap in the afternoon is beneficial, and that's true. For me personally, a 20 minute nap is just impossible because if I fall asleep, I fall asleep and I wake up like a zombie for the rest of the day. So then he comes like practice and commit, give 30, 10, 30 a try, perhaps initially on two exercises. And this you can always try, of course. I mean, if you do this in your regular workouts and then just try one or two exercises. Just try and find out if they feel nice, if the, the technique is maybe, uh, uh, maybe you don't like it or maybe uh, you love it. 
I mean, I personally love it. I do my whole workout like this. Uh, do them several times until you fully understand, understand the technique. And then commit to the 8 exercise routine for 2 weeks and 2 more weeks and final 2 weeks. I mean, I don't know why it just doesn't say for the next 6 weeks. But okay. And yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, do them uh, eight times before you fully understand the technique. It's just the understanding and the feeling. What I felt is the feeling is very important. Not every exercise, not every machine, not every uh, barbell curl or whatever feels the same. The workout video that I'm going to post later is a workout with Nautilus 1 machines and every inch of this machine feels the same. There's no point that one inch feels more heavy than the other. Every inch feels the same. That's not with every exercise. And this you have to learn. This is what you have to feel and experience. Like when you do, uh, for, exist, uh, for, for instance, you have a machine, like with, uh, um, let's say for biceps, so with many machines, is the first part, first few inches are easy, then comes hard part, and the contracted part is again, is, is even uh, heavier still. Then the first part, the and the first part, the easy part, you want to anticipate. So when you do the last negative, or even the first, but the last one is the most important, is when you start at the contracted position, take a little bit more time there, go a little bit more slower, because at the end, you know it's going to be more easy. That's the same with a barbell curl. When you do a barbell curl, the last part is almost no tension on the muscle. So you want to focus on the part where is the most tension. So if you feel and you do the barbell curl in the conventional way, then actually on the top is also not so much uh, contraction. So as soon as you lower the weight a little bit, you feel that the contraction gets a little bit more. Stay there, stay a little bit more in this zone. Make it a little bit more harder there. So when you have the final 30 seconds, maybe stand, spend five or six seconds maximum in the top position. And then when you get into the heavier part, stay there a little bit longer. Go a little bit slower there because you know that when you get to the bottom position it gets easier again so in the top position you want to stay there maybe five seconds and in the bottom position you want to maybe stay three to five seconds and the rest stay in the middle i don't say that you have to stay uh, uh, stay still there no keep on moving but take a little bit more time there and it goes with every exercise every exercise you do learn from it do it the first time and maybe you have already experience with this machine so you know where is the easy part or where is the hard part if you have of course the nautilus machines and the machines what uh, i trained on you don't have this problem then every inch is the same so every inch is as heavy but if you train with other machines what i do in my regular gym then you have to find out which parts are the easiest you don't want to have an easy workout you want to have the hardest workout you can. Finally, I wish you good luck with this workout. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know what your experiences are. Let me know how it feels. Let me know if you have good results on it. And uh, keep me posted and have fun.